I made this really cool epoxy inlay wooden coasters using my laser. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how I did it. It doesn't matter whether you have a diode laser or a CO2 laser, because I'll show you how it looks on both. I give some really important tips that you don't want to miss. So make sure you watch the video till the end. Welcome to Melopine Lasers. Let's get started. The first thing I did was to pick up some scrap wood I had lying around in my shop. I split them into roughly the thickness I need for my project and then I ran it through the planer. Some sanding and there we have our stock material. Now that we have our coaster blanks prepared, it's time to start designing our engraved pattern. For this project, I'll be using Lightburn to lay out my design and control the laser. The key things you should keep in mind when designing for an inlay project is that you generally want clean open areas for the epoxy to fill in and you want enough material left around it to have clean borders. I made this frog design using DALI. I asked it to give me a coaster design on wood with a frog using red, blue and green colors. Then I asked it to consider the limitations of laser engraving and epoxy pouring. Then I used Photoshop, Illustrator and Lightburn to separate out the color layers and other elements. To get different depths, I control the number of passes for each layer. More passes for more depth. If you want to try any of the designs shown in this video, I'll link the Lightburn and SVG files in the description. You can download it from there. You could also create simple designs within Lightburn itself. Let me show you how I made this honeycomb pattern on Lightburn. I'll be making a 4 inch circular coaster. So I draw a 4 inch circle and place it to the side. Then I'll draw a hexagon using the polygon tool and make it 24 mm wide. Make sure you go with a number that is easy to divide because we'll need that in a moment. Then we go into the array tool. Let's make this 15 on X and 15 on Y. Then we'll click shift by half on X and in the line spacing we'll type in minus 6 which is 24 divided by 4. Click OK and we'll get this. Now we'll take the offset tool Type in 2 mm. This will give us a 4 mm wide channel. Select both and click delete original shapes and click OK and we'll get this. Now we'll create a copy of our circle and cut this shape out which will give us the pattern we need. We'll be engraving the pattern and then we'll cut out the circle. Coming to the settings, you should choose a power and speed setting that lies somewhere between your cutting settings and your engraving settings. If you use engraving settings, you won't be able to remove enough material for a pour. And if you use cut settings, you run the risk of burning your material. Coming to line spacing, it is a good idea to go with a low line spacing. I'm using my 40 watt S1, which has a spot size of 0.08 by 0.1 millimeter. So I'll use a line spacing of 0.08. You should use a line spacing that is lower than the spot size on the Y axis or the second value of spot size. This will make the line overlap a bit which won't leave material between the lines. Another thing you could do is to use the Z step per pass. But your laser needs to have a motorized Z axis for this. This will lower the laser head after each pass so that the laser is in focus and that will give you better depth. If you need a clean cut, you must use an air assist and use high speed with low power and more number of passes. A key aspect you should keep in mind is the grain direction. You should try to keep the scan direction perpendicular to the grain direction. This will give you a cross hatch texture at the bottom. This is up to you. You could scan parallel as well. After a few test runs, I settled in on 125mm per second at 50% power with 500 lines per inch resolution and two passes with one millimeter Z step per pass. This gives me a good overall balance. This one over here is 100%, 40 millimeter per second with five passes. This one is 60%, 40 millimeter per second. And I even tried cross hatch, but the end result didn't vary much. So I decided to go with scanning perpendicular to grain direction to save time. So that's how to set your parameters in light burn. If you want to learn Lightburn, let me tell you about our Lightburn Masterclass course. Now I know what you're thinking. Is this just another course? Well, it's not. 
What makes this course different is the live weekly session and the one-on-one -on -one support we offer in the course. What more, we also offer a no questions asked money back guarantee. I'll leave the link in the description, do check it out. Now let's get back to engraving our designs. The engraving came out with about a 2mm depth. You should not make it too shallow because we would be doing several sanding passes so if you make it too shallow you wouldn't have much depth left after all the sanding. The idea is to have at least a 1.5mm depth after sanding. That was with a diode laser. Let's look at how the CO2 laser 1 came out. You see the edges are much cleaner when you use a CO2 laser. So if you are planning to use light colored wood. A CO2 laser would be a better choice. Also the engraving time for a CO2 laser is going to be less due to its higher power when compared with diode lasers. Once we are done with the engraving, we'll take a brush and clean out any char that's left in the pockets and give the top surface a light sanding to remove the smoke stain. With that done, we are all set to do the epoxy pour. If you have designs that come over the edge like this one here, you will need something to stop the epoxy from flowing out. I am using some masking tape since the gap is not large. You could also use some hot glue along the edges of your design if they are simple ones. This will save you time when you sand the excess epoxy later. Now let's mix up some epoxy. The container usually comes with the instructions on what proportion to use and how long it takes to cure. You can also add in dyes depending on the color of the wood you are using. We can now pour the resin into the engravings. You need to make sure the resin level is above the surface because the resin gets absorbed into the wood and you wouldn't be able to sand it. After pouring, we'll use our hot air gun and heat it up a bit. This removes any air inside and prevents bubbles from forming when drying. Once the pour is done, we need to let it cure. I usually wait for 2-3 to three days. This makes it hard enough to sand. This piece has dried for around 3 days now and we'll now start with 80 grit paper using my random orbit sander. If you are sanding by hand, make sure you follow the grain direction like this. Once we are done with 80, we'll do 120, 220, 320, 1000, 1500, 2000 and all the way up to 8000. You can go higher if you want. Once the sanding is done, you can use a polishing compound to finish. I also give it a couple of coats of PU to give the wood a glossy effect. So what do you think about this project? Let me know in the comments below. I wanted to try getting different shades on my epoxy for which I laser engraved at different number of passes to get different depths and ended up making this landscape coaster. So here are the finished product. All of these came from scrap wood I had lying around. I hope you enjoyed coming along to watch me making these. Let me know what you think of these coasters and if you have any questions in the comments below. If you think the video was good, hit the like button. To get better at lasers, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be waiting for you in the next video.